Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from Sort of Interesting and today I am being joined by my lovely Sam. Hello. And of course, Charlie's never far away, although we have snuck away very quietly while he's asleep to try and get this audio recorded without any background dog snoring. So, as you can see, Charlie there's taking his pride of place on the crow's nest of Abel's Ark as we head up towards the mighty Ponkasuffly Aqueduct. But I was quite glad that Sam didn't actually want to go over the aqueduct. No, no, no. no. My fear of heights, no, just wouldn't let me do that. It's just too much. And Charlie's not a fan either of heights, so it wouldn't have worked. Now, the, the Charlie being scared of heights thing, this is a total tangent, I know. But that has fascinated me, as I didn't even realise it was something that dogs could really be aware of. But after seeing him go over really low railway bridges mm. and just drop flat to the floor and need to be almost physically picked up and carried across. Yeah. It's a, a oh, fascinating it's a real thing. thing. It's real. Anyway, that's just my inexperience. So uh, you hopped off the boat with Charlie to do the lift bridge yeah. here. Well, I took the boat just up to where those cars are parked ahead to turn it around. Not in the car park, of course. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I was trying some humour there. So... That was only a few minutes travel away from Ponkasuffly Aqueduct and you may wonder why I said I was glad that Sam didn't want to head over there and that's because this was filmed in the run-up to Easter and luckily it was just before the, the big mad rush of the Easter traffic up here but if we cast our minds back to some archive footage here of me passing over the aqueduct with my nan and granddad on board good old narrowboat Tilly, you'll see in this footage, and this was also taken at Easter time as it just so happens, we actually came to an actual dead stop on the aqueduct itself multiple times due to the extraordinary amount of traffic that's trying to filter through these narrow sections of this top end of the Langofflin Canal. So I was certainly glad to, uh, well, not have to venture into the maelstrom and gauntlets of Easter at the top end here. And uh, I've been reading out some posts of uh, fellow boaters on Facebook who've made, I wouldn't say made the mistake, but certainly had the experience of it yeah. coming up at the wrong moment. Oh, uh, look at that, narrowboat Tilly, my nan and granddad on board. Oh my goodness me, I would love to go back onto a little tiny boat like that and just, just see, I feel almost, with the better technology and all-round better stuff that's available now from the 10 years ago that I started life on Tilly, that I'd almost find it easier, even though I've got accustomed to a slightly bigger, more, I don't, I dread to use the term luxurious boat, <laughs> but a, a more fully featured boat, we'll say. Oh, of course, being uh, Easter time, we've of course got a lot of very small new additions to the canal. Um, yeah, anyway, let's get back on topic here. So, it's been lots of fun and games going on. Um, so I've been moving my stuff back on board, as some of you have seen in uh, recent videos, after the boat only a few weeks ago was completely emptied out, ready to sell. Um, I'm still not 100% certain what the plan is. So I'm heading back to boat life completely full time. However, we're still sort of debating whether to put the boat up for sale in the meantime, buy a smaller boat as that will one day become the second boat. And then once the first boat, the current boat, is sold... Oh my goodness it's me. not very complicated, this. <laughs> I wish I'd have handed this over for you to talk about. Um, uh, so basically then use that money to buy the main boat for the two boat setup that we're thinking about. Of basically the... the the Sam boat and then the Dan, the Dan boat. sleeping boat, really. <laughs> the dog house. Um, but yeah, anything you want to add in here? Sorry, I've, I've completely gone off topic in this video, <laughs> I know. So I've led you with no real sort of segue into a topic or anything. No, just going through my favourite thing. Not the bridge. I hate, hate going through big under bridges. It goes through me. Oh yeah, the tunnel. This mm, is tunnel, I don't like it. Oh, yeah, and you'll see in a moment, I think I've added a little clip in here uh, as to why that is. So not only have we got hate, uh, hates, heights on your hate list, yeah. we have also got 
spiders, spiders. and general creepy crawly things. And I've got to say, if anybody's brave enough who walks through any of these canal tunnels or boats through the tunnels on a regular basis, pause this video now and have a good look at just how fully covered the roof of the tunnel or the ceilings of the tunnels really are with little hanging bits of cobweb containing the remains of goodness knows what. And uh, yeah, but here's the magical moment as we emerge out into the wonderful wide world. Although I say we, I was actually on my own on this trip, as you can tell by the fact there's no Charlie on top of the boat. <laughs> um, interesting thing, when I was walking to and from the car with some odds and ends, uh, I thought that I'd seen a cat and I thought I'd scared it and it was running quite low to the ground. Then I heard a splash and when I walked down here and found all the uh, water where what I believe was actually an otter had clambered out of the canal into the tunnel and then ran down leaving those footprints on the uh, towpath there. So that was just a, quite a nice little random nature uh, spotting. But of course, once an otter's into the water, especially in the pitch black of a tunnel in the night time, it's pretty much disappeared before I had a chance to get even a single hair of it on camera. So another trip this was. Uh, again, this is what I like and what I said in a recent post on the website. One of the things I love about boat life is just being able to do these little stages of boat trips and deciding, oh, we'll stop like that day we turned around and went through the lift bridge. Yeah. We pulled up just as the rain came in and it was like, right, that'll do us. No yeah. need to stand around on the stern getting soaking wet. Um, here, I just put this little clip in. That is Cronospan at Chirk. And you can actually see just uh, the just above the trees, or sort of above the boat in the centre of the screen, uh, you'll see little wafts of what I believe is like the sawdust and uh, wood fibres in the air from there, which uh, you can imagine the locals certainly have a lot to say on that, but you do sometimes actually see it on the surface of the canal, almost giving it like, almost as if it's got a slightly, uh, not solid, but a bit of a porridge-like look mm. to the very top layer around there. So, as you can see, I darted through the tunnel, quick uh, clip here from the classic Turk Aqueduct and my favourite view ever straight through the arches of the viaduct there and I absolutely love all that countryside up on that hillside there. Anyway that's for another video. Amazing downhill cycling to be done there. And um, yeah I moored up at the poachers here and as well as the classic white geese we actually had a few Canada geese around so that was just someone changing it up for a change. Uh, the terrible use of the word change there. <laughs> um, oh, side note here, I will be doing a proper video on the Jackery solar and battery packs, but just a spoiler here, I absolutely love them and I think that they're going to add a huge amount of ease to my boat life. Now, this is the classic mooring place from many of my old videos from winter on Narrowboat Tilly, seeing these amazing scenes outside the Poachers pub. Here's something you don't see very often. At first I thought this was the police, but it was actually, sadly, the air ambulance. But while it was hovering around really low, you can imagine the din of a helicopter, it actually shone the light right down onto the boat and onto the canal. And of course at the time I thought, before I saw the orange colour as it came into land, only a few hundred feet away from the boat, I thought that it was the police and I really had that sort of pit of my stomach dread feeling that there was some mischief afoot on the canal so I did check that my doors were locked. Oh another side note here my terrible terrible ability to control the temperature on board sometimes. Two in the morning you just saw and it was well over 30 degrees. Another side note uh, as it was my birthday and I was carrying my paints and my warhammer stuff up and down the towpath to your house to me mum's house all over the place I've never walked so carefully and gently as carrying about a hundred odd pounds worth of paints in tiny little, very losable pots down the towpath. Anyway, as we are disappearing, heading down uh, off from the poachers, heading ultimately towards Ellesmere and hopefully by that point having a decision of whether this boat is for sale or not, I will say once again, mm. sorry that I've done all the talking, Sam. I'm quite used to it by now. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. Um, 
Anything you'd like to throw in as the last minute before it all comes to I an end? I think you might have said it all, but there, yeah, yeah, there's there's our Charlie again, loving life. Look oh, at him. Lovely stuff. Anyway, thank you so much, my friends. Please do check out my Boat Life books available for the Kindle and as a paperback. Links in the description. Feel free to add me on all the social media stuff you'll see in the description as well. And please do check out sortofinteresting.com because I am finally actually posting regular articles and photos over there. Until the next time, my friends, thank you so much for tuning in. Have a fantastic day. Keep it interesting. Keep it boat-worthy. And of course, my friends, farewell. Bye-bye. <laughs>